Benny, did you watch the XFL championship? Yes, I did. Ah. And, well, first off, refresh my memory. Did you have uh, power rankings on this one? Going no, into I, the championship? Well, yes, actually I did. Actually I did. And, okay. Um, well, I'm going to assume that, that the D.C. defenders were favored. Well, the D.C. defenders were, were actually not favored over the team that they played from the north that they beat. To get I to know the that. Championship, I'm talking about this game. favorite over um, Arlington because right. the Renegades basically had a, less than a 500 season. That is correct. They were the only. They were in the negative, as a matter of fact, as far as uh, you know, net points were were concerned. Um, right. But Luis Perez apparently marked that line between the old losing Renegades and the new energized winning Renegades that got them probably to the point of being what four and six something like that so that four that they got probably a lot of it came under perez um but they were massive i think eight point um un underdogs uh to dc uh it, you know it's, it's interesting watching vegas do odds on <laughs> these guys i mean <laughs> you know all I mean, they'll do odds on any and everything, you know. There's so much information, but um, it it was an upset of upsets, and it you know the 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 uh, Renegades came out early, looking really good. What do you well, think they, about their first half? They attacked them early on, the same way they attacked Houston in the semifinal game. They came out on fire. They scored two touchdowns early. They showed surprisingly good defense and eventually took control of the game and just wore Houston out. And this one, and I'll tell you, I don't know why it seemed this way, but this seemed like it was a really long game because even though they seemed to be in control and they were a couple scores up a few times, once D.C. finally found the end zone, and it took them a little while to do it, they kept threatening to catch up and take over. And I kept thinking, they're the better team. They're going to soon explode, and they're going to take this game away from Arlington. It's going to be a shame because Arlington came here ready to play. I mean, we got a 4-16 and playing a 9-1 and team. And they don't look anything like they looked during the regular season. Again, uh, last week I said they looked like a team that had nothing to lose, and they looked the same way in the championship game. But they held on. Not only did they hold on, but they kept scoring. Yeah, they, they scored scoring. more um, than any uh, game that season. Isn't uh, that amazing? A 4-16 scores more than any other team in the league over the course of the season. No, well, I mean, over the, they scored game. more than they had ever scored. More than they had ever scored. Well, right. probably both things, <laughs> or at least close to it. I know there were a couple blowouts. I know the Battlehawks had a couple big big scoring games. But but the whole idea of what I'm saying is, yeah, these guys didn't – it was not – it wasn't like they did something – ah. That's not the – they did do something nobody expected. But it wasn't like they jumped on them early, they caught them down, maybe D.C. kind of took them lightly, and they got the score, and then they held on. It wasn't like that. D.C. scored, got close, and then they went down and scored again. And big plays, too. Long run. Big, huge plays. Big pass. Back-breaking back plays. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right when the defenders started thinking, okay, all right, we got this thing. We got it. They would score in a big, huge play, and D.C. was like, oh, my God, these guys are for real. That was a really, really good game. And then near the end, you had the, the impact of the rules of the XFL, which are a little mm -hmm. different than, than the NFL. And you had the one play where D.C., I, I think it was a, a, a personal foul. 
uh, unsportsmanlike conduct or something like that, which put their kicker further back. Oh, jeez. And then they have to kick it within that square of the tw- around the 20-yard line. And because they didn't get it in there because of the foul, the ball got placed all the way out like at the 35-yard line. <laughs> so they're already a third of the way. Yeah, the other team's 35. Right, right. So basically, right. and as the commentator said, they can take three knees and kick the field goal. <laughs> that rule is a hurt piece. But here's how they got to that. Their regular place kicker kicked the kickoff out of bounds. Okay. And when the kickoff goes out of bounds, they get the ball on the other. Uh, it's not the 35. I think it's the 45. I think. It might be the 35. But when you kick it out of bounds, that foul equates to the same thing. They automatically get the ball on your side of the 50, 35, 45, whatever it is, which makes it almost automatic that they're going to get points. So then after the personal foul that put them in that same position, they took the place kicker out, put the punter in, and he didn't kick it far enough. He had to kick it past the 20. He couldn't get it past the 20, which put him back on the 35 again. Okay. Okay. That guy that kicked that ball that didn't go far enough, he was the punter. <laughs> so they benched the kicker for kicking it out of bounds and getting him in trouble. Put in the punter. He can't reach the 20. Puts him right back. Those those are scores that they gave away. And people and, say kickers aren't important. And by the same token. The just by the two big scores that DC had, and with the way that the rules are, they were they were actually still in the game. Like they're yes. like two possession type situations, according to XFL rules. You know, yes, they had a chance after one of their scores late in the game. They had a chance to get the ball back with the onside kick rule, where you get take the fourth and fifteen. They threw a pick. <laughs> So every opportunity they had to prove their dominance, Arlington shut them down. Man. And every mistake they made, Arlington took advantage of. Well, yes, they did. Yes, they did, man. Um, and again, you know, you, you got uh, two well-known coaches, you know, that, that are there, um, that are a part of that. And, and, you know, the one coach, the uh, Arlington coach, he won a college championship at that same Bob field. Stoops. Bob Stoops. At that, yeah, at that same yeah. field, you know. I was thinking to myself, we we had talked about coaches and well-known coaches and not so well-known coaches uh, doing these XFL and USFL type teams. There's one thing, I don't, this, this is me talking now, that's similar to coaching a USFL or XFL team and coaching a college team, which obviously Bob Stoops is used to. He's always been a college coach. He has been in the NFL as an assistant, but he's been a head coach in college at a couple different schools. When you're in college, and this is why some NFL coaches that come from college end up going back, there's the difference between a kid needing you and wanting you to help them get to that next level as opposed to coaching guys that are already on that level probably making more money. So when you're coaching these XFL guys and these USFL guys, they all have aspirations of getting to the NFL. So their head coach is important to them. They listen. They pay attention. They kind of really revere them. Where there are times in the NFL where, you know, we, you hear people talking about the guy lost the locker room. You don't usually lose a locker room in college unless you really suck. But you can lose a you can lose a locker room in the NFL because these guys are like, man, this guy's crazy. What's he? Who's he think he's talking to? You know what I mean? So these XFL guys, because they are trying to get to the NFL, they're really feeding into what their coach has to say because who knows. 
some NFL coach or some NFL organization could be calling Bob Stoops saying, hey, what do you think about this guy? We're thinking about bringing him in as a free agent. They're going to talk to him. You know what I mean? So these guys, on top of the fact that, again, just like in the NFL, sometimes it's the team that gets hot at the right moment. They yeah. got hot at the right moment. And when they beat Houston, they knew. I think once they beat Houston, they knew they had the wherewithal to win that championship. I didn't believe they would do it. I went with D.C. I went the safe route. I don't usually go the safe route, but I went the safe route. But these cats came out on fire, man. Luis Perez should probably be in some NFL camp somewhere. I think that might happen. And I think I, it I might happen. Read that somewhere that that yeah. might happen, and it might happen soon. Yeah. All right. 